so any questions before we get started okay so uh, stop me any time don't hesitate so stop me any time to ask questions and uh, we will uh, yeah, you know we'll answer that then and there and then uh, you know this is kind of a fast paced session so i'll not be able to give you more dedicated time for you to do hands on but i request you to follow along so whenever i am teaching something complex i'll say okay please uh, look at my screen don't uh, do anything else but other than other than that time you follow along i'll take some pauses like 5 minutes or something and you can complete that right so yeah we'll do it so let's go to our spaces so i am selecting dwc training space right there are no files so let's go to the space management and let's generate some time data okay so you have not done this already in your space you can also do this now so i'll go to this time data section and then we see the option to create timetables and dimensions right so here you can leave the uh, name like this itself timetable but if you want to change you can change also doesn't matter but this settings matter because now if you leave it in 1000 from 1900 to 2050 it's going to generate all those years right in the time tables so if you really don't in your business use cases if you really don't require that much data for example you are creating a sales scenario and the sales data itself in your system itself starts only from 2010 right then that doesn't you don't need 1900 right so in that case you can adjust it maybe in future you don't know how long the project will run so you can keep it till 2050 or if you are a bit conservative you can also reduce that as well so this basically you know saves a little bit of space and then save and then increase gives a little bit of performance that's all right so if you know the time range then you can always adjust the time range if you don't know it yeah leave it at default okay so let's create the time data Ram, have you shared your screen because I'm not able to see it. I have. Sam. Yes. Yes. Yes, Nikhil, we can see. see. No. Okay. Why am I not able to yeah, see? Yeah, it's visible. I was shocked. <laughs> I was talking, showing things. So. Let me know. We join the meeting. I'm not sure because I'm not able to see this screen. Sure, Nikhil. Maybe I'll stop and reset. Let's see. Yeah, you try to rejoin. If you are not able to see, I'll again stop. I'll try. So yeah, so so far we have just generated the time data for the space. Now we are going to the space. So now we should be able to see the four time tables and four time views. Right? So we have time table, day wise, month wise, quarter wise. Same we have views also, right? And all the that are deployed. So we don't have to do any separate deployment. So even in the space, when you generate time, it says in the top. Uh, you know it's deployed immediately right so you don't have to do any deployment and one more thing i wanted to point out in the space management is that uh you know uh let's go back to space management so this is a card view right so sometimes when you are reading blogs or online articles they will show you the list view and sometimes the administrator prefers to use the list view right so you should be aware that there is a view switcher here so you can switch to the list view and in this way also you can see all the spaces and then uh, people you know get confused with the this symbols right they assume it with the data uh, you know, what do you call the data temperature they think it's cold space means something uh, green space means something warm space means something etc so here it it's not like that it's basically uh, so you see here the assigned disk and assigned memory they are getting used right so what happens at one point it becomes critical for the administrator to manage spaces right there will be some spaces that people are constantly using and uh, you know that are critical in the uh, data wise they are reaching the their 100 percent whereas there are some spaces they are created long time ago and even no one is using it. The utilization is almost zero or one percent, something like that, right? So the administrator have to know which space is using more, which space is using less, so that he can do an admin activity. Like he can delete unwanted spaces, release the space for something that is being used and extend spaces like that. So for that, this temperature is there. So the temperature, if you hover over it, see if the storage used is less than five percent, it will be showed in blue. 
so in our case all our spaces we are not created much so everything is in blue only so if it is between uh, 6 to 90% uh, it is a healthy space meaning like the data is between 6 to 90% uh, if it is more than 90% it will be critical right and then there is an administrator option to lock some spaces for example if i want to lock this space there is a lock option i can lock it and then it will show with the red padlock symbol right so that is something i didn't mention in the space management session so i wanted to cover that as well okay so now that's out of the way let's go back to our spaces and so one question yeah yeah go ahead the, uh, as you mentioned log if i lock that space so no one can able to see that space right admins can see it and uh, they can also whose space is this ah my space no yeah, we have already like uh, uh, in the past uh, session we so uh, we have seen that uh, we have delegates all the people in the space right correct so those people can't see this space right if if we lock no so uh, two scenarios when the space will get locked so one is manual lock we are doing the lock right and another is if there is insufficient space also it will get locked so by okay. lock we mean uh, we cannot create new things but whatever is there we should be able to see it so let me lock this space dwc training or okay let me not disturb saram i'll lock the training space okay now the space yeah. is locked yeah it clearly says it's locked manually also sometimes like i said if it is 2 gb it will not exactly stop at two. i don't know now if it has changed with data sphere but previously at least it will not stop exactly here but at one point it will get locked it will say you know insufficient space i think when that will happen is even you know our allocation is also done and even the system has no more uh, memory i think that's when it gets locked or something like that Right, so now let's go back to this space and check data. Yeah. Yeah. So I was inside training space. So this is the training space. You see all the things I can see, and okay. only is it's locked and I cannot utilize more space. From more space. It. Got it. Got it. No. Yeah. Yeah. Thank okay. You. And then yeah, we can unlock it. Okay. Uh, Ram, just to add in Kalpan's question, I mean, uh, if we have locked one space and we have already utilized somewhere else, I mean, in other system, maybe in SSC or somewhere else, and we are uh, pulling data from that, so will there be any impact after locking? Nothing. Any uh, so any from the from the uh, yes. usage wise, nothing mm -hmm. will change for the locked space. Only thing that it, is it changing is we can create anything else in that. Yeah. We can utilize so, the existing one, but we can create anything. we cannot create anything and why the admins do that is mm -hmm. when the data usage is very critical it's uh, like close to this in the system like close to 100% in the overall system then they want to you know uh, do some reorganization of the spaces at that time uh, they will lock some spaces which they feel like people are creating more stuff there and they want to avoid that then they can lock some spaces yeah okay Okay, so now back to our data builder. So let's talk about uh, Ram. Before we proceed uh, in the creation of, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, Madan, I can hear you. Yes. In the creation of uh, time data, I see a lot of options like uh, calendar type is not editable, granularity is not editable. yeah so here uh, i mean basically what they have exposed is uh, let me delete that so if you have uh, used hana right in hana also we do uh, the time uh, generation like similar uh, thing called time generation right so here it is basically they are reusing that same concept and here the only editable thing is the names and the uh, time range here it is just letting us know that what type of calendar it is using and what is the granularity uh, here the granularity may be day but still it generates multiple views in which one the detailed one is the day view and then if you don't want 
at the day view level you also have views at month quarter and year level also so depending okay. on our uh, scenarios so we will see that while creating graphical view maybe when we are creating a sales transaction uh, model or something like that depending on our model then we can make use of whatever view view we want we, if we are only doing quarterly reporting we don't want day level then we will only use this view and we will not touch this other two views like that but yeah again like you said it's very limited uh, configuration only the names all the names you can change and this years you can change and the only important configuration is this year so if you know how much year you are going to use keep it very minimum and now for training purposes yeah at least keep it very minimum because save space okay and uh, where exactly these views get stored yeah I, in the space like we saw right in the data builder you will see that so now if you go to data builder there are eight files so four views and then the four tables oh yeah so if you go into the table and if you preview also uh, you can see the data Yeah, so this is how the data looks. So there is a timestamp, month, month number. Every okay. detail about the table will be there. Yeah. OK, so now let's create a table. So we have seen creating new table like this, uh, clicking new table and then creating it. We will come back to that. We'll create a nice scenario for sales. When we are doing that, we'll create the table like that. But for now, we'll create a table by uploading a CSV file. Yeah, creating a table from a CSV import. So I am uploading a file, right? So I will use maybe the sales order. There is no space. This is a different file, salesorders.csv, right? So it has a header, I know. So I am checking header and CSV uh i leave it uh, auto detect but it is comma separated so i can give comma also right so this way when we are uploading file uh, if some of you have worked in sac right then this is a very familiar interface to you right so this is the wrangling interface where you have all the list of columns and then in the top you have something called as the transformation bar right and then we have very limited transformation options very simple transformation option so we have concatenate which is joining two text we have split extract replace change and filter right so we'll see what are all these things and what we can do with that and then we also have when we apply some transformations uh, they will be logged here under the transform log and we can go back and forth applying transformations and then doing transformations etc right and this details panel uh, in the side, this one that shows the overview. Basically shows what are all the columns we have and what are all the data types the system is proposing. Generally, if you see the number, uh, the system is proposing it to be a integer or a number. If you see calendar, it's a date. If you see alphabet, it's a string, right? And this is a decimal 1.23. And there is there will be a box like 0, 01, uh, which will be Boolean. Right. So if there are only two values in the field, then it will propose as Boolean. So first things first. So if you want to edit a particular column's details, for example, if I want to change the column name instead of sales order ID like this together, I want something like sales order ID maybe. I can do it in two places. One is I can double click here and I can edit it. Or here in the overview panel uh, in the sales order overview, I have an option like I can go into that particular field, right? So I see a cube like symbol. When I click that, it goes into the columns details, right? So here also I can correct the name and I can correct the data type. So if I don't think sales are ready, even though it's a number, I want it to consider it as a string, then I can select string, right? And here there is a data preview uh, which shows different things like how many records are there, how many unique values, etc. So let's get back. And that's that's the first thing, right? So you can go to each column and you can correct whatever you want to correct it, correct, right? So you can correct like that. You can set all the metadata properly using this way. 
and coming to decimals uh, so when we choose the numbers there is you know integer and number so basically integer is a whole number whereas that yeah let me show that so integer is a whole number whereas decimal is a number with a decimal part a number is a decimal with a number it's like this right and then uh, the format you can choose whether in some countries they use the thousand separators as dot and decimal separators comma but in india and many countries we use comma as the thousand separator and dot as the decimal separator right so that is about this sidebar and another interesting thing is in the top where it says the source it gives the file name from which the data comes and then also uh, the number of rows and number of columns in the file right so whenever uh, whatever number of records it exists in our file only the first 2000 records will be fetched here for this transformation and whatever validation we are doing but once you apply a transformation for example uh, you do something like uh, we, we have not seen the transformation yet we'll see now like concatenation or something and it is only performing that action on the first 2000 records and if you think Maybe you want to check the entire data to make sure your transformation does not fail or throw any error. Then what you can do is you can click this button that says validate the full data set. Right? So when you click that, the system will run all that transformation and whatever you have applied and whatever data types we have selected. For example, we have made this created at as a date type. Right? So in the first 2000 records in date, there is no problem. Maybe in the 2001 record, the date format is not right. So we will not see now. But while creating the model, like while deploying, it will fail anyhow. But before that, if you want to catch, you can click validate full data set and the system will validate all this number of records. OK. So uh, that Ram, is, yeah, go can ahead. we change the data type while having data within it? So this uh, this entire data wrangler you will get uh, while you are uh, loading a CSV file to create a table, right? Yeah, so we will not see that. that. Yeah, not after that. Yeah. So we will see so that, that, uh, in that process. Correct. In the existing table, we will see the how that CSV upload looks differently, right? So this is while you create the table with the file upload, right? Sure. Okay. So now, can you, Ram? Can you please show once more the decimal point? How we set the decimal points? OK, so for example, if I select uh, some field, this has all numbers. OK, so if I go to the type, so integer, it is whole numbers and number yeah, is the uh, decimal, right? Mm -hmm. So as soon as I select number, it gives me two conversion formats. So one is like thousand separators with comma, another is like thousand separators with dot. So I can uh, so but it is fixed with two decimal. Yeah, it is fixed with two decimal. Yes. Achha. If we require uh, sometimes we require three decimals or one decimal, then it can it is not possible yet, right? Uh, it should accept. Uh, it's we are just inputting the file. So uh, the scaling you are looking for to set for viewing in the story is in a different place. So this Achha. has nothing to do that with that. This okay. is the in, input conversion format. So whatever format the data is coming in, so it should accept more number of decimals or so because in longitude and latitude fields. Uh, yeah, yeah it's it's accepting because I, I have given around 10 decimal yeah. places. So it has yes, accepted. Yes, it would, yeah, it would yeah. accept. Uh -huh, it just depends on the data which we are uploading in that. Exactly. Correct, correct, correct. It's just uh -huh. they are showing two numbers just to show that it's a decimal separator. That's all. It doesn't have any meaning. So here we are only selecting what is the thousand separator and what is the decimal separator. We are not setting the scale. And run this date format. Do we have any option to change this format? Like this is available in YYYY MMDD, and I'm I'm sure this data is as it is, which is available in the file which you uploaded. Can we change that? No, again, and like all we do this have a requirement formats, to display the date. So in in BW, the, in BW, in mm BW, -hmm. we have two conversion formats, right? Like one yeah. is for the incoming conversion, and another is for the display conversion, right? So right. here also, it's similar. So here we can change the date format. The thing is, we have to match the format in which the date is in the column, the incoming mm -hmm. format. So incoming, it has perceived like it is year, 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 month, month, and date, date. 
because uh, here we have numbers like 23 and 24 it has correctly right. perceived which is date which is month sometimes it will make a mistake right. like when the date is also within 12 so it can get confused and it can propose a wrong format at that time mm -hmm. you can correct the format you can go in and you can manually correct the format in fact we sometimes we do have a specific requirement from business itself that in what format they want to look at the date yeah looking at this, uh, we we will set all those in a different place like correct, in the view level we will set it correct this is for yeah. inputting so here we have no business requirements all technical requirements so however yeah. the format the data is coming from from the source we should match that format the data Aren't is just data coming data? from the file and sitting in this area then yes. whatever the format we would be finalizing for display that is a different story yeah that is in a different place here sure. we are not doing that yeah sure which data type we were using for fiscal uh, year period that 2015001 it is coming yeah so here we are using it as a it's so integer, selected as a, yeah okay. integer yeah because uh, i i use date so it has taken a different format for yeah okay so let's uh, yeah let's look at the transformations quickly so oh, hi Uh, yeah, I was waiting for my turn. Uh, uh, I raised my hand. I wanted to understand. Say, uh, whenever we are uploading a table, we get the possibility of creating a key of particular dimension. Do we also get a possibility here, or it takes it by default? How does it work? How can we uh, populate it as a key? Yeah. So here we are staging the data, and we are going to create a table first. right so once we define uh, once we create the table before creating the table we can we are you know wrangling with the data to clean any data quality issues uh, to enhance the data type the system has proposed all those things but uh, so far we have not created the actual table right so when we create the actual table yes we can set the key but now like we will know what the key is so for example in this case it should be the sales order id so if i want i can set as the key but if i forget this also like setting this as the key then we can do it in the table as well this is just the staging area here here the main okay. thing is you don't have to think from the analytics perspective here the main thing is bringing the data into the system without any issues okay okay yeah. okay okay so now let's look at some of the transformations so we can do transformation in multiple ways so one way is when you highlight a column here there is a button right which is uh, which will propose some transformations so for example if i click two columns together for example like this and this then uh, when i create a transformation okay so it's not as smart as ssc so yeah so here we can click at uh let me pick a nice field come on okay so let's first look at the concat transformation right so i want to combine two columns to form one column right so i am just combining sales order id and created by it doesn't make sense i'm just explaining the concept to you but yeah if in some cases like when you have first name last name you might want to combine them to form some other name so the format is simple so you have to give column 1 comma column 2 and using a separator so now i am not giving any separator so if you look the preview column which is in green it is concatenating the order id and the created by without anything if i give a space it will add a space if i give some separator like a uh, hyphen or slash it will add that thing right so that is concat attaching two columns together using a particular separator right so it is only supported on type string so i am using one of the type as numbers that's why it's throwing an error so let me also make this a string okay Okay, that's why it was not proposing the smart transformation also earlier. So now, if I if you see, if I highlight two columns, uh, it is proposing a smart transformation. And if I hover over it, I can see the preview also changing. So if I separate with comma, it looks like this. With space, it looks like this. So I can change to whatever I want. So I keep it with the space and save it. Okay, that is concatenate. Now the second type of transformation we have 
is uh, split, which is the reverse of basically what we did now, right? So if you have a column which has the full name and then you want to split into first name and last name, maybe based on the space or whatever, uh, whatever uh, separator you want, then you can split and then split as one extra option which is the number of time to repeat the split. For example, if you are splitting a date column based on hyphen or slash some date separator, right? Then you might want to do it multiple times, not one time, but maybe two times or three times, etc. Right? Then you can change this number and it will split into that many columns. And until you click uh, enter or click this sign, it will show you a live preview. Based on that, you can see, OK, whatever you are expecting is correctly matching and then you can click. Right. And if sometimes if I make a mistake, if I want to go back on something, if I want to blindly go back, I can just click undo. It will undo the last action. But if I want to see what I have done first and then go back, I can go to this transform log and then I can see, OK, what is the last action I did? So I did split based on uh, this into two columns like that. OK, so if I don't want that, I can just you know cancel it and it is showing what it is going to undo in orange preview also. So if I undo that, it will go back and it will do that re reverse that transformation, right? So it removed it. Now the third transformation is Ram. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, so if we want to split the dates like uh, year one in one column, then month and then date. So in that case, we have to give three. Two. If you have two okay. separators. Yeah. I'll say two. So now let's uh, see replace, right? So for example, if you want to replace something, so uh, in your data, you have null values maybe in a column, right? And then you don't want to use the null values, then you can replace it. Or here, for example, uh, America, I don't want to call it as AMER. Maybe I want to replace it into something, right? So when I click, like I said, when I click a column, there is some smart transformation proposal. Similarly, when I click a cell value also, so now, for example, I'm clicking AMER, there is also some smart transformation proposal. Here I have replace, right? So it is saying, can I replace America with AMER or America with APJ? Uh, it's not, we don't want that. We want to replace America with something of our own, USA. Right? So I'm giving USA, and then it is showing what is happening in the live, in the column itself, right? So what is the difference between the first two operations we did and this operation is like the split and concatenate, they resulted in additional columns, right? So if you concatenate two columns, you get a third column. If you split one column, you get multiple columns. Whereas this transformation, it is not affecting or creating any new columns. It is just replacing the existing values in the column, right? And here the format, it is like, I, I can replace a particular word with a particular value, and then I can also apply where condition. So based on any other column, so if I want to say uh, replace only if the currency is USD or something, uh, for example, currency matches value USD, then it will only replace in the places where it is USD. Maybe because in Americas, if we have both North American countries and South American countries and they are using different currencies, then in those cases, only the whatever matches the VAR condition will be replaced. Right? So that is the replace transformation. And then we have change case transformation also. Again, that is purely a string function. So we see here, uh, everything looks to be in capital and sometimes we don't want that. Then we want to change case. Then again, in the smart transformation itself, if you go here, it shows change case to lower and it shows a preview also. So we can change that case to lower. Similarly, we can change to lower to upper and all that change cases we can do. Right? And finally, we have filter, right? So filter is basically to uh, filter out the data that is coming in. So for example, in the sales arc, if I want to filter something, say for example, I say matching and values, I'm just giving APJ and EMEA. Okay, so APJ worked. Okay, one second. Filter. 
OK, it's semicolon separated. Yeah, so APJ semicolon EMA. Yeah, so if you see now uh, it is filtering. All the USA ones out, right? So only the APJ and EMEA are matching. So if I uh, apply this transformation. Right, so now all our uh, US rows are deleted or in other terms, anything except APJ and EMEA are deleted, right? So if you see here, instead of 2000 records it was showing previously, now we have only 1540 records, right? So there are transformations. Uh, the first two transformations affect the columns, right? They create a new column and we will see the extract now. Extract also will create a new column. Right. And there are transformations which does the transformation in the in cell level itself. So replace and change. They just replace the string or change the case lower case, etc. And there are transformations which affects the number of records. So filtering will affect the number of records. Right. OK, so now extraction. So for example, uh, sometimes you know to extract things, for example, in the date, it is very simple. We can just use the split and extract the year, month and date easily, but sometimes it might not be very simple, right? In that cases, we want to use the extract transformation, for example. So I have this sales order ID. In the sales order ID, maybe I have the sales order number and the uh, what you call the line item number concatenated already coming from the source, but I want to extract it because I cannot split it because I don't have a delimiter. I cannot say split it based on space, split it based on comma, something like that. So I'm going for extract, right? So what to extract the sales order ID? And then we have many options like after, before, between, containing, so many things. So I, I am just saying after and maybe after the first or last occurrence. So maybe I want to extract the last number. The last number is my line item number. So I'm just saying extract anything after the last zero, right? Then what will happen? So if you see after the last zero, so a couple of things give me a value, right? Uh, so that's how you extract. So basically when you have a string value and from that, you want to extract particular things, you can use the extract transformation. It will basically create a new column with the extracted values, right? So these are the various transformations options available in your data wrangler while you are loading data, right? So once we are happy with the transformations we have done, we can deploy it and deploy will automatically do a full validate, but you can also click validate the full data set for errors, so it says no issues found, right? So now we can deploy. Before deploying, I just want to check the transform log. Uh, so in transform log, there are two things, right? So if I have a column highlighted, then it will show all the transformations that happened in that column. But here I have a table level also. So if I click that table, it will show all the transformations we have done so far in the entire data set, right? So we have applied filter, we have applied change case, replace, extract, concat, everything, right? So that is how you use the transform log. And if you don't want a particular transformation, for example, we want the APJ and MER to go back to uppercase, we can delete this transform and then it will just reverse that, right? which you cannot do with the undo redo because undo goes from the last action to previous actions, right? Here it is no order, you can just delete whichever you don't want. OK, so now everything is good. We can deploy. And it asks for a name. I'm just leaving it as sales order. Maybe I'll say file. Now you see that it has created the table for us, right? So we didn't create the table. We didn't go in, uh, define the columns, define the data type, anything. But the system 
took our file, it sampled the data, it sampled the first 2000 records, it proposed the column names, it proposed the data type. If we wanted, we could have changed it. Uh, for some, we changed it. For some, we kept it as it is, right? And then when we uploaded the data, the system created the uh, table for us, right? And you can see it by default, it chooses relational data set. That's why we, when we were creating table, we also selected relational data set because relational data set simply means it is a flat table. That's all. It has no meaning. It's just a table, right? So now, like uh, uh, Karina asked, right? So here, if we missed to set the key uh, in the wrangling, we can set it here, but that was a good question. In the wrangling also, you can set the key, so it will get set. But somehow, sometimes if you miss it, uh, no issues, you can come to the table and you can set it here. Right? Only thing you cannot change is the technical names, right? So the data type also you can change after you create, and you can change the description, description of columns, everything. Only thing is after you loaded, you cannot change the technical name of the table or the columns, right? That's all. And you can view the data preview anytime. So if you click the preview, you can view the data. I have no data. Check this in the view. Okay, so any questions? Are you following along? Do you have enough time to? Yeah, yeah, Ram, uh, a quick question. Here uh, we have seen different types of transformations. In some cases, you also showed an example of uh, splitting the existing column, mm -hmm. like sales order item. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, is there a possibility? Can we discard unwanted columns while creating the table itself? Yes, we can. Oh, OK, I didn't show that. Yeah, so we, we have an option called delete column, so we can discard unwanted columns. So maybe let's do another file import. Uh, sales manager. Because see when uh, the uh, source column has uh, order and item and I split into two columns, there is no need for the main column to be created in the table, right? Yeah, so for example, I'm splitting the name into first name and last name. You mean now the full name is not required anymore, right? Right. So I can go here and I can say delete column. Uh, OK, so I deleted before I gave the transform, so I can go to transform. It was just showing live preview. OK, so split on. So now it has split. Now I don't want this column anymore. So I delete column. So now I have the first name, last name only, and that full name is not there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ram, is it possible to rename the new columns? Ah, uh, yes. So you can go here and then you can say. Okay. Okay, Aram, I have one more query. Like, for example, if we have created a table in space which get loaded due to memory, uh, so we will still be able to load the data in the table or not? Uh, so, to be fair, unless, I mean, again, you have to check this because the product keeps changing, but to be fair, unless your uh, system itself runs out of memory, if your uh, if your space runs a little bit over memory so far in the past i have not seen any problems uh, with the data loading right so even if your space is 2 gb and it's already 2 gb and your data load you are loading and it crosses the space un unless your entire tenant has space there was there has been no problem in the past like the same thing we discussed with the licensing if it says 50 licensing after 50 licensing, it says warning, but it still allows you to create licenses, right? So it's a gray area. So anytime they can make a hard stop. Okay. Okay. And uh, yeah. Okay. Please continue. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. And uh, if it is locked, then we cannot even make any changes in the existing table. Uh, for example, uh, the small changes that we want to perform. 
okay you mm. meant okay logged okay the space is logged so in space is logged then you cannot yeah you cannot add more data but you can make ch so un the space is logged it will not allow your space to consume space that's all other than space consuming you can do anything we can do anything. if you want to okay. de delete some things it is going to free space only so it will allow you if you want to change some name it will allow you but if you want to consume like if you want to file upload it it will not allow you Oh, okay. Okay, Ram. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Ram, just for more clarification. Uh, so there are two time two type of work here. I mean, the consulting, which wherein we are involved in the development of the things for business, and one one part is the administrator part, like ah, who is handling yeah. the users, the space allocation, all these things, right? So uh, when we do have a specific limit of the space and the memory. And when we are uh, implementing something in in that period, we are we are required to create more data, more tables, more views, right? So everyone has to be mindful of the memory uh, in parallel, or that is something which uh, admin part, uh, I, I mean admin person would take care of that. So everyone so has to be mindful of that, or the one person. So we will talk about that. We have something called as uh, accelerate methodology. So mm -hmm. If you are from a BW background, uh, yeah. their SAP proposed ASAP methodology for the project implementation, right? So in the cloud, they have something called as accelerate methodology. In that, there are different phases, like five, six phases in the project. In that, in one of the phase, like in the prepare phase, you will do the sizing. You meaning not you, maybe exactly. whoever is the whoever is the architect or whoever, he will decide the sizing of the entire tenant first. Right, so that entire tenant sizing will play a critical role, and yes, as a consultant or as a person who is developing something only within the spaces, you have to be mindful at least of your space uh, sizing because you have to then say, okay, you asked me to create all these uh, ten models for this uh, ten views or whatever, and for this I will require this much space. But you have given me only this much space like that. You have to negotiate and then you have to get the sizing. But whoever is playing the role of uh, the entire architect of the solution, they have to come up even uh, when they are proposing the tenant creation and all. They have to do the proper sizing and they have to buy the proper uh, you know system and they have to do all those so that there will be some person who is playing the role who uh, does the bird's eye view of all the things and there will be some a person who is who is doing only within a space and both that. of them should be mindful of uh, different things because system won't stop us system uh, uh, it would keep allowing us to create more more data more files and all so uh, it would be just a uh, sizing uh, exceeding thing so we have to be mindful yeah. what what we are touching where we are, are we at the boundary should we extend the area or size so before that only we have to take the necessary calls Yes, so uh, yeah, that's a good question. But uh, yeah, park it till Saturday. We'll sure. see that methodology, and uh, in that it will make clarity because we will exactly. I would like to look at that that how system is behaving at that point in time. How system is uh, is is system is giving some some kind of warning or some kind of uh, message or something. So that is something which I guess everyone would like to uh, look at the screen only. Okay. Create a space with very mm -hmm. uh, less memory, the minimum memory, and then upload a very huge file, and sure. then you will see what it will do. Yeah. Come up with the it's a training response. system. It's your playground yes. basically. So do everything you want here. Sure. Okay. okay. So thank now, yeah, thank you. So now hey, back. Ram, couple of two quick questions. Sorry. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Uh, Ram, uh, as you uh, deployed once that uh, your data said, uh, can we go back and can we change anything or can we uh, insert any filters over there after deploying? No, that data wrangling screen is a, like a magic screen. <laughs> once it disappears, it disappears. Yeah, that, that has been like a lot of people are proposing that there should be a way to go back to that yeah, screen. Uh, but, yeah, at the yeah, moment. That so. was also my question as well. It just got lost in conversation uh, say you, you were explaining something to madan that we have split the uh, you know table and then we deleted that uh, particular table of complete name say once that is deployed can't we just get back say if, uh, you know if we want that uh, uh, table name back of the complete name that can't be uh, that can't come back 
that can come back it's that wrangling screen now acts like a wizard like mm-hmm. how if we download some software and that installation wizard we can click next 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 and install once installation is done you can only use the install software but you cannot go back to that wizard right similarly like oh, it's a okay. it's a magic screen it it allows you to do everything and deploy but once deployed you cannot go back to that screen yeah so no edit operations are performed run i mean in the in the end product like uh, in whatever you have created for example the sales order table i can edit everything their question is basically can i go back to the wrangling screen and do more wrangling for example yes 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 yeah that you yeah, yeah, that you cannot do in one more uh, question that is uh, the replace you showed and replaced in the transformation level, right so uh, can we do more than one replace together because you have shown that apj2 usa so can we do couple of replace together it will be separate separate uh, transform i mean in the same column also you are doing it will be multiple steps acha okay we can't uh, do uh, man can't write in a same line yeah, like yeah. with us comma comma separator or a semicolon right we can't no it write. it will uh, not accept list and okay. uh, anything it will only accept string to string yeah Ram, um, yes. Yeah, Ram, here we imported the data from flat files, like sample data. Um, so we can make the connection to the line systems as well, right? Yeah, we will uh, now. We will make a connection to us uh, O data, and I'll show you how that works as well. Remote tables. So for that, uh, the same thing we have to do, right? Uh, the O data. No, 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 no. Don't don't get ahead of yourself. Like we'll see that what happens. That it will be different uh, there. there will be a different screen yeah so yeah we will see a connected uh, system uh, and then we'll see how we will not move the actual data but we will use remote tables so so far we have been creating tables in our spaces right so it consumes your space whereas remote table it will not consume your i mean it will consume only for the metadata but it will not consume much space okay so now you have a table already and you want to upload some data right so i am clicking import csv file right so now if i choose a file for example the sales order file itself right so now you see uh, i have a import wizard uh, which is not the data wrangler we have seen already right so here it is very limited it says do i want to delete the existing data before loading if my column having a header what is the if there are missing values should i be null or empty string and what is the comma separator and if i say import it's not taking me to any wizard or anything it's just importing the 5000 records into the table right so that is the difference so if you create the table yourself manually like you create the column name data type everything then the sap's assumption is that you don't need the wrangler anymore because you have already done yourself you have created the table why do you really need the wrangler right so there are two different approaches so if you already have a table loading data is through here right but now you want to uh, create a table itself by sampling the uh, data and the system has to propose you the column name data type etc then you have to do from here so if you do from here import csv you are creating a table but within the table if you are uh, doing upload csv you are importing the data so that is the difference you should understand ram i tried selecting comma separated rather than auto detect and uh, it is throwing an error okay can you share your screen and maybe uh, others maybe you can take a break from 9 to 9:30 or you can practice and then we'll uh, we'll again meet at 9:30 Okay yeah i can see your screen
Am I right so far? Yeah, yeah. Can you it. can you open the file once in your uh, edit uh, notepad or something? Let's check what is the delimiter. Maybe it's a semicolon is the delimiter. I thought it is comma two, but uh, let's check once. No, in not in Excel. Maybe in notepad or some text. Editor. Yeah, it is semicolon. It's semicolon, right? Yeah. Exactly. It depends on what file we are uploading. What kind of data is there in that file? Yes. Yes. And RAM, if we auto detect that, then it should not also be able to fit. Yeah, it should be able to load the file. It will be able to detect the semicolon. Yeah. OK, so now yeah. let me show you the DB viewer like someone has asked. This is I mean, it's optional. It's not part of DWC, so you can if you want, you can understand the concept, right? So Ram, I have one question. Yeah, like, go ahead. Uh, if we are loading data from file and some rows are having uh, some wrong data, so how it will behave? Like, will it reject the rows having wrong data or or how it will not load any data at all? Yeah, when you give the validate data set, uh, it will give uh, errors on whatever uh, field is having that error. And you have to fix the error before you can deploy. So with errors, you cannot deploy, so it will not create the table at all. Uh, but if we have created table first and then we are uploading well, loading file. data, yeah, it will mm -hmm. reject the it will reject the error rows and it will load the other rows. Okay, because yesterday I tried this, uh, I was not able to load any data. It was only throwing error. Uh, it should. But, I mean, it depends on the type of error you are getting. Is mm -hmm. it a key error? Like a primary key error? Yes, no, I ha like uh, in the uh, net amount, I have given some string value, so it was ah, not then it will reject, right? So for all the all the data, you would have given string and it will it would reject, right? No, not all rows. For only one row, I have given a string value. For okay, a then let's <laughs> let's see that if so, mm -hmm. I don't okay. know if something has changed recently, but usually it will only reject that particular row. Let's see why it's happening. Okay. OK, so now. Uh, yeah, so this is called D Beaver. So if you search in Google, you will find that. Right, so you have community edition as well as pro edition for our purposes. Community edition is fine. You can download and install right? And then you have to do two things. So one is to connect any external tools, right? Uh, you have to whitelist IPs. So in the system configuration. And the IP whitelisting. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, it should be called allow list and block list. So yeah, whitelist. Uh, blacklisting and whitelisting. People thought it's racist, so they changed the term. OK. So it's not going to that screen. This tool RAM probably similar to the SAP HANA Studio, if I'm not wrong. We already have a interface that allows to connect to the database and perform the actions. Correct. Probably HANA Studio serves the same purpose for this. Uh, yes, but uh, HANA Studio, I think they stopped supporting uh, HANA Cloud databases. I'm not sure you can try connecting, but I'm pretty sure in uh, somewhere in 2018 or 19, they stopped active development of HANA Studio and then they also stopped supporting the cloud. For cloud, you have only the HANA, this web IDs like the Explorer and things. So Maybe then, you know, Eclipse might solve the purpose because it has a lot of extensions. So people are yeah, yeah. So using you Eclipse. Can use Eclipse. Yeah, you can use Eclipse. You can use VS Code. Advantage. Yeah, you can use Eclipse. You can use VS Code, anything. I'm just showing you how to connect the offline tool. So you can do the same thing and you can connect to any tool. Because so I understand, you know, the team, the most of the people in the team are aware about this Eclipse. They've been okay, doing they modeling know. And, they, uh, so probably, you know, it will be easier for them to understand. 
but the I mean, purpose is similar uh. yeah the purpose is similar yeah so the steps are similar so first thing is you have to find your uh, public ip and you have to whitelist that ip right for example here you have to add a range uh, so add and then you have to give your public ip this is called cidr notation right so for example uh, if my ip is this 49.206.114 Right. So, if I give explicit IP, it will only allow start address, end address. It's allow one address only. If I give uh, some mask like ten, then the start address is like this, and only the forty nine one ninety two is constant. And for everything else, uh, it is using a mask, so it allows this many addresses. Right. So, why would you need to allow such ranges? Is because there is a restriction of the number of ips you can add to this list only maximum of 107 lines you can add here so in each line then you have to make utilization of uh, maximum ip addresses but again you have to keep in mind that uh, you know you are whitelisting potentially lot of ip addresses then with the ip address and your username and password getting leaked and your host name and port number getting leaked if all this five someone has then they can hack you. Not only whitelisting will make you vulnerable, it's one step towards making you vulnerable. And then again, there are four other things. If the hacker has all four, then yeah. If he has all four, then already it's a problem, right? So this is the first step. You have to do the IP whitelisting. And then you have to do something called as, there is something called HANA tools on demand, right? So there is a, a website and here you can go to HANA and then you have to install the client tools for whatever operating system you are using. So for Windows, for example, you have to download and install this. So it will install your uh, uh, drivers basically, right? And then you have to go to your uh, machine uh, and then use the ODBC data source or JDBC data source. And under drivers, you can check once you install this client software, you should see this driver, HD, uh, HDB ODBC driver, HANA database ODBC driver. Right? So once it is there, you can create DSN. So user DSN is there, right? So you can add and you can select the driver, HANA DB ODBC. And here you can select uh, HANA database single tenant and you can give any name you want. For example, I'm giving SAP HANA. And here is the host which we get from the data sphere. Right. So for example, Okay. So this is the host and this is the port, right? 443. So if I give this. Host name, port number is 443 and connection is TLS SSL test connection. It asks for user ID and password that also we can give from here. This is the username. And password, I think I have stored here. Yeah, connection successful. OK, so now we have created a connection, right? So that connection we can make use in any tool. So for example, if I want to connect a database uh, tool, I can connect it. If I want to connect a reporting tool, maybe Power BI or something, Tableau, I can connect it. It's just all of them make use of that ODBC connector and they will connect through that. So you see ODBC is here. So I go to ODBC, it will list all my 
DSN uh, data source names. So I just created I think this one. Right now it is connecting to the system. And it's reading the metadata. Yeah, now it is displaying all the schemas, right? Not only this space schema, but everything. So yesterday someone was asking this question, right? So we have right access in this named schemas. For example, DWC training hash RAM. I can create new table, delete table, existing table, whatever I can do. But in the space itself, the space has a schema, a DWC training. That's where in the DWC we are cre creating table view, everything, right? So in this space schema, we have only read access. So we cannot delete or anything, but we can read. So this is a table maybe Sadam or I have created in the space. So here we can read the table from that. So yeah, that's how you basically connect any tool using your ODVC connector. So three steps you have to do. So first step is whitelisting your IP address range in the system. Second step is uh, downloading this HANA client tools and third step is in your operating system configuring the ODBC using that driver you just downloaded. If you complete these three steps, you can connect to any client tool that supports that particular driver, that HANA driver. Yeah. Okay, so I will take a short break.